I'm going to start a new project here on modeling this 35 millimeter slide projector. And it's the kind of thing that uh, I used to use when I was teaching. I have slides here that I would put in the carousel of maybe the frog dissection or the earthworm dissection or whatever it was. Or maybe my father had something like this and we'd watch uh, family uh, pictures projected onto a big white screen. Uh, back in the old days and so i want to model this this is by art bully all right and i will uh, link to this uh, image if you'd like to uh, have a look at it or use it as a reference image and i want to do something that i haven't done uh, very much and that is talk about um, how i might approach modeling something like this uh, how i even approach anything that i would model uh, to decide whether or not I thought it was something that I could even do. All right, so we're going to have a look at, at, at that first. So the main body of this looks like it's a flattened cube, uh, a rectangle, a square. You could start with a plane, and then you could extrude it up. Um, and then what we would have to also do is bevel the edges so that we get a little bit of rounding here we'd have to um, select some polygons on the bottom and extrude them out all the way around evenly all the way around so all of that is is easy to do likely I would put on a bevel modifier as well and then use probably a cube and do a boolean and cut out this piece not this middle one here but just the actual shape cut that out past the beveled edge you have to be careful about that and then just you know put another cube in there or, or a plane and extrude it out this way a little bit to sort of represent the button but like i say we'd have the bevel modifier on there as well to smooth it out so we get our rounded edges we get this cut out and we would have a bevel on there and that little button um you could do this kind of stuff here in sculpting i don't really feel like doing that kind of stuff um, or most likely they used uh, zbrush or zbrush for the lens we could take a circle and extrude it out and give it a little bit of width so we could have this base part here we could just put a little plane here, a small piece there, and extend it out. We could use a cylinder or a circle for this, extrude it out, again give it some thickness, and then um, delineate an area. So bring an edge loop in over here, and an edge loop here. And then we could, um, as long as we used enough vertices, probably 32 for this circle, we could then select the polygons right here in the middle, press I to inset, so we separate them and pull them in a little bit, and then add a subdivision surface on there. And that would give us something similar to this. We could have a sort of a lens ring on top, another circle, and then, let's zoom in a little bit more, we could have just a couple of circles. We could copy a circle from here, and pull it in a little bit, give it a bit of thickness, and do one more to sort of create the, the lens ring part here. For this piece, you could use a UV sphere, let's say cut in half and flattened and uh, smoothed out, maybe with a subdivision surface, and that would probably be uh, what I would do for that. All right, so we're building it up. Let's talk about the carousel part itself in the slides. Um, what I might do in this case is I might want an indentation, but I might not actually. So we could take a circle again and place it in the middle with a little bit of thickness and a little space in between. And then we could take another circle. We could start down at the base, the top here, and we could extrude the circle up, extrude it in, extrude it up again, and give it a little bit of thickness and then drop it down and then maybe delete you can't really see in there very well um, and so we could do that this could be another piece a circle all right that we would um, 
and come in a little bit, extrude in and maybe scale it in a little bit and then down. And again, we can't really see what's going on in there. I mean, I've used them before. It's just as, as a cylindrical piece that you put in and you turn to lock the carousel in so we could build something like that. And then it would come down here certain ways, maybe to the base or just shy of the base. So it looks complicated, but obviously that part is pretty straightforward in this. And then we have all this. So what are we going to do for this stuff? This is what I always do when I look at something I'm going to model. I'm going to go, could I do that? And how would I, how would I do that? So we need another uh, circle here. So we've got that, I guess, from, from this piece that we built. And then we have these. Well, we can just make one and we can spin it around. So what is it? Well, I probably would just go with a plane, so just a square, all right? And then put an edge loop right near the edge, about one-sixth or one-seventh of the way down. Grab this top face and pull it up just a little bit so we have this little bump on top. And that would be good enough. That could come, that could poke out just a little bit outside of this. And then if we wanted to, we could just add another plane that's very very thin and spin it up as well around the same uh, number of times 360 degrees or we could I'll zoom in again we could take one of these pieces we made out of a plane we put an edge loop we pull this out we have another edge loop down there and just pull the front out a little bit now it is sort of rounded here, so it does look like a separate piece if you look really carefully. And so chances are, if I cared about this, I would model it as a separate piece. And the same thing with these. We've got the circle that comes out and goes in and goes up, etc. These things here look to me like they're planes, all right? Just a simple plane, very thin, okay, with a bit of a bevel on it, spun around. Now, this is going to take a lot of polys, however. And if you look down here, you see this lightish area here, and then it's dark. It looks like this circle is not just coming straight up and then out and straight up. It looks like it, it comes down here, and it maybe it's, it, it scales out a little bit on an angle. All right, so we can think about that as well. This piece, just a plain that's extruded out but the corners are rounded all right um we could make we could use a plane for these pieces all right this is a small plane and then just round the edges off so to select that vertex and that vertex and hit shift control b put number of points round it and then bring it back in just a little circle forget about that bolt uh, there's a number of techniques you could use uh, to make this. I would probably use a plane and have just two vertices remaining. Okay, delete the other two, two vertices, extrude them down and join these. So I've got one vertex, one vertex, one vertex, one vertex. Select these two here. Do the same thing we did a minute ago. Shift control B to, to bevel them to give a bit of a rounding. And then I would extrude that, etc., etc. For this piece, I would probably use a circle, all right, of maybe 32 vertices, and I would select a few here, select a few, two or three, two or three, two or three, and then I would extrude them all in towards the middle, and then I would join the vertices up in the middle, and I would go from there. Um, then there's another circle here. Or I could build it out of one circle of 32 vertices, come out a little ways, go down, come out a little ways, and then do that thing with the vertices into the middle. And then we have this, which looks like it's going to be a separate piece, just like these. All right. What I would probably do is bring a circle in that 64 vertices, make it the right height, and then select all of the polys and then press I twice, inset twice, bring it in a little bit and then indent it or something like that. This looks like it would be just a circle that is squished down, but again with a little bit of a base on it. So really everything that I see here is relatively easy to do. We have this piece too, which you could just take a piece of this circle, bring it off, 
and and give it a bit of thickness and then have some cuts in it and just extrude up and just make that shape and that's that's that and then for the backs it's pretty straightforward although i don't really like it extending off like that i kind of wish it was right in the back and i might do it that way but basically you've just got a rectangle so a plane or a cube or something um with, with a space inside like inset it and then you've got another area inside a, a second rectangle inside so you can just copy it and shape it a bit and then you've got some planes that are really thinned out and you can just use the array modifier to do that you can copy that delete the array and just put put one down there one down there and then you can take those again and you can bring them over here just make them really thin and have about five or six or however many you need another little rectangle easy to do uh, we can make a plane here just a flat plane and then we could um, use edge loops here and here and then you can extrude in to make this shape and extrude the edges in a little bit to give it some thickness and a bevel and stuff just like a cube and this one could be just a plane and you would extrude the edges in and then what I would do is take a circle cut it in half and then select the bottom vertices and pull them down and join them make a face out of that and I would probably uh, do a boolean or maybe a knife project to make that shape and then extrude it in and then probably would bevel the edge so I always do and probably bevel the corners uh, to make it nice and smooth um, so there's nothing overly difficult it's just it would take it would take time uh, to do it so it would take me more than one video to model this I think it would take two and then texturing well we would see what we what we want to do with that but I do like the model and I actually choose many of my models uh, either based on a reference or just something that I feel like making based on it not being too complicated that it's doable uh, that the shapes are things that I feel like I could I could model and uh, sometimes uh, you know I am presented with a challenge or I present myself with a challenge and it might take me two or three days of trying stuff before I figure out how I'm going to achieve a particular uh, shape or structure and that's an interesting challenge this one however I don't think will, would present that much of a challenge we, it might not end up looking exactly like this but uh, it, you know hopefully it would be kind of close and it would be something fun to model that is a uh, beginner ish it's not an absolute beginner but it's you know like an advanced beginner like I always call myself and uh, I usually try to model you know around that level of, uh, of stuff so if you're interested in how I am then going to go ahead and model this Please join me in the next uh, video or two, and I really do hope to see you there. Uh, I think this will be fun and cool, and it's always interesting to see if we can recreate uh, some of these um, some of these objects or some of these models and see what they look like in the end. All right, so take care, and hope to see you soon.